and welcome to this episode of Spencer Science Season 6, Episode 15. So, first of all, I was thinking of doing something else, but but then, for the final episode, I had an idea. So there's this guy, okay, and he's, uh, oh yes, by the way, I got some cool sunglasses. Anyway, uh, there's this guy out there named Nikola Tesla. Now, Nikola Tesla, first let's just, who is he? Well, he was, of course, a, fam a famous scientist who made the remote control, who made uh, energy, he made elect more, the, what, what is known as Tesla electricity. Now, unfortunately, he also made something entirely false, which is the earthquake machine. Tesla's earthquake machine, which didn't go exactly as he described, or at least I said, think how it goes in the Mythbusters, season two, episode 12. Anyway, but let's talk about him. But he's, he, Nikola Tesla, he had a big brain, though, okay? <laughs> uh, he had, I mean, for us not to know him as well as other scientists, does that say something about us? Well, well, um, I think so, because this guy, this dude, even though he maybe wanted good press for the earthquake machine, other than that, it's like, this dude was impressive. I mean, he found the ways of essential electricity, remote controls, um, vacuums, more stuff, more stuff than finding about mind control. I mean, he, this guy, trying to find, find stuff. I mean, it is really a surprise that really not many people know him. I mean, they know the, like, they know, we know the big names. We know Albert Einstein. We know, um, could I think right now? Isaac Newton. Um, dang it, why can't I think right now? Uh, sorry, anyway, let's just get to the point. The point being that Nikola Tesla love, was this guy that just could have been more out there. I, I mean, it's possible. Um... Yeah, really though, we like we know Isaac Newton, we know Albert Einstein. Yet yet Tesla, this guy, he was out there and although he was wrong about the earthquake Tesla earthquake machine and that and that was found out on Mythbusters. But point being that this guy had had a big brain and his intelligence is also important um, because, I mean, hold on, I'm just going to look up him for a minute, but like his inventions was something that was insane and I could, I could basically read them all to you. Um, just give me a minute here. All right, so here we have it, folks. Um, 
Yeah, so he made tes the Tesla coil, which, um, I mean, that also the remote control, like I said, um, the induction motor. Now, what is an inter an induction motor? And how does it work? Well, let this uh, video explain that to you. Um, so I'm just gonna... The invention of induction motors permanently altered the course of human civilization. This 100-year-old motor, invented by the great scientist Nikola Tesla, is the most common motor type even today. In fact, about 50% of global electric power consumption is due to induction motors. Let's get into the workings of induction motors, or more specifically, into Nikola Tesla's genius thinking. The induction motor has two main parts, the stator and rotor. I will. The stator is basically a three... Well, I mean, I, we, we can't get too much in. Let me just like, because I have limited time really span let's just uh get to part um by using a variable frequency is proportional to the frequency Hold up. consider the simple coil arrangement we learned that a rotating magnetic field is produced due to the three phase input power it is quite clear that the speed of the rmf is proportional to the frequency of the input power now the thing about this I mean yeah it was basically able to go at insane this motor the motors are meant to go at insane speeds well this well I mean I can't get too much into it right now I guess you guys can do your research because I was not prepared nor did I really know actually that I was gonna talk about this in this episode today until I saw what this guy uh did. So anyway, um but yeah. So now we move on to the teleforce which um Uh, and this was in like 1934 in which uh, Tesla explained that a constant is constant of a teleforce directed energy a weapon in which he said would be capable of so sorry about that uh, my phone went out of power Anyway, what I was about to say was that essentially Tesla was making a death ray. Like, and it feels, the idea feels very much like Star Wars and the Death Star. Just by the drawings and stuff. And his way of thinking. Um... So let's move on quickly to something else that Tesla did. So he did all sorts of different rays. Even one called a violet ray, which has high frequency. It's a high frequency facial machine, essentially. So uh, that really, I mean, yeah. But then, you have a Tesla bell as well. Um, so, guess, and he used a lot of things that happened to be, well, by his name. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, that's the thing uh, that... So what is it? It, it is um, 
a as this website um, des describes it, it is a uh, the outside of fluids. Um, so it's hard. Um, well, I've again, I have limited time, so let's move on. Um, he also created the neon lamp, um, which is a gas lamp, and is also basically pretty straightforward. Um, so, now let's move to the world wireless system, which is basically where Tesla designed a system uh, that w was intended, as it says, uh, to accomplish all transmitting electrical signals from Earth. So essentially what he was doing was making what we know today as um, what sort of wind turn turbines, but not really. I mean, yeah, it was sort of actually. Well, no, no not wind turbines. Why am I thinking that? No, uh, but power plants. That's what I want to say, right? That electrical wired. You know, I'm just. I'm just gonna stop now. Um, and now let's move on to Tesla's o oscillator. Now, Tesla's oscillator was a pretty cool device, actually. Um, it was used for energy transfer. Now that, now that is, that's, that is pretty cool. Yeah. So. Anyway. Um, and but I can't get through any, everything, but let's lastly say that he created the vacuum variable capacitor, um, which that is basically, well, a vacuum, um, you, you know, it's, um, uh, a vacuum. That's, that's basically what it is. So, anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll see you guys in whatever, whatever my next Spencer Science Blockman kind of thing is. I'll see you guys later.